Hello, my name's Matt and I'm a table saw holic. I know I've got a problem, I admit it and I'm seeking help. But I always check eBay for what's on sale locally and this old saw was on for a couple of hundred pounds. I know I don't need it, but what was I supposed to do? Not buy it? So it's in fully working order. It doesn't have a switch, you just turn it on at the wall. But in theory, I could use it right now, but it does need a bit of work really. It's got a 12 inch blade and it's a fixed arbor, not tilting, but what happens is the fence actually tilts. It's got an aluminium insert plate that needs fixing or replacing, but the fence system looks rock solid. It's missing a riving knife, but there is a space for one so I can make one, and the guard just fits on the side and slides up and down. So I think I'll start stripping this down and give it all a clean. The side panel has this probably Bakelite knob on it that needs undoing and then the panel can pop off. The panel on the other side pops up without having to do anything. And you can see it's got those nice little pins that slot into little spring clips. The fence can just be loosened and then that all slides off out of the way. And inside the saw there's this little access panel to get to the saw arbor. There is no spindle lock on this saw, you just need to get a spanner on either end of the arbor, so that's from either side of the saw. I don't know how old this saw is, but it's certainly old enough for all the nuts and bolts to be an imperial. I really need to get to a boot sale and buy an old socket set and some spanners. This is a 2.5 horsepower motor. So the saw is belt driven and it's got two of these V-belts that go over some pulleys. They're a bit worn, so I'm just going to get rid of them and buy some new ones. As you can see, there's a bit of a sawdust build up, so I can just pick up clumps and throw it in the bin bag. This is an oil tank, and on the other side of the saw, there's a badge saying lubricated with Esso. So I'm assuming that's not the original motor in there, and I have no idea what was in there originally scoured the internet and even though I can find a few of these for sale I can find very little information on them and certainly no user manual. The motor's mounted to a few blocks of wood and then onto this sheet of ply so I'm going to get it unbolted and I think this all needs to go in the bin. The cable's just been cable tied to the casters so I can move them and the cables seem better days so I'll probably rewire it. So as you can see, it's a two and a half horsepower motor, so it shouldn't be lacking power. With the motor unbolted, I can get that bit of plywood removed and just thrown in the bin. There's quite a few years of compacted dust in this, so I get the vac out and try and get most of it out. And then I get the compressor and blow out the rest of it, or the most of it anyway. With that done, I wheel it back in the garage and leave it alone for a couple of months. This is just going to be one of these projects I pull out and work on it when I have some time. So a couple of months later, weather's improved a little and it was dry for a couple of hours so I thought I'd get this oil tank removed. I don't know what it was for, so if you know, let me know. As you can see, it's got a filling hole at the top and then a tap at the bottom. I'm certainly going to hang on to the tank because there's a bit of history, but I'm probably not going to put it back in the saw as there's no need for it now. And it's just another bit to collect dust. As you can see there was quite a lot of rust on that tank and inside there's a dust shroud that's just as rusty so I'm getting all the bolts taken out. It is just bolted to the underside of the cast top on both sides so I get them all done and then try and remove it. But even with some wiggling around it is not going to come out. After staring at it for a while I work out that the cast iron top is going to need to come off. Luckily, the top is only held on by four bolts, one in each corner, and one of those is missing. With the remaining three bolts taken out, the cast iron top can just be lifted off. With the top off, the dust shroud comes out without too much bother, and this should make cleaning it so much easier. Now you can see there's not much left, it's just the lift mechanism in there. These little spring catches that hold the sides on have seen better days, 
So I get them removed and I'm going to clean the rust off. A few of them are broken and missing so I don't know if I can put them back on or if I can find replacements or fabricate something else. As you can see the previous owner has fitted some casters but there's only one hole through the foot so there's only one bolt on each caster. There's nothing wrong with the casters so I'll definitely keep them and use them for something else but I want to do something a bit better. This was a really heavy machine when I got it. I'm really surprised how much you can actually take apart and strip it down to pretty much nothing. It's certainly going to make it easier for me to move around now. Just got my hoof pick out and cleaned up these feet. Screwdriver really. So these feet are made of some kind of cast alloy along with the front and the back of the saw. So there's no rust on them but the paint obviously has come off. The front and the back of the saw are braced together with these steel bars and they have rusted so I get them removed on both sides. There's not much left now so the lift mechanism is attached at several points to the front of the saw but only one point on the back so I get that last bolt removed and then the back panel can come free. I'm not going to remove the lift mechanism, I think I can clean it up and paint it with that in place. The first thing I thought I'd clean up is the cast iron top. So I got some WD-40 on it and then started with quite an aggressive wet and dry paper. This removed most of the rust and was quite a satisfying process. The mitre slots were quite corroded so I cut down a bit of wood about a millimetre too narrow and then I could wrap some paper around, lubricate them and give them a clean up. These are standard size mitre slots and to start with my mitre bar wouldn't fit in them at all but after a bit of work I got it so it slid freely through them. Now with the worst of the rust removed, I could get the random orbital sander out and do some more sanding using finer grits. Then I finished by hand with some more wet and dry paper, I think this was like a 1200 grit, just working with the grain of the metal top. When I was done with the sanding and I was pretty happy with the result, I gave the whole of the top a clean with some white spirit to get any grease and dirt off. Then I can get the cast iron top sealed with some wax to stop it rusting. I just brushed this on and then buffed it all off to a nice shine. I was really happy with how this top turned out and got me quite excited about actually using this saw. The next thing that needs cleaning up is this dust chute. It's got this nice identifying plate on it, but the screws are tapped into the sheet metal and I could not budge them. I'd let some penetrating fluid sink in, but still no joy, as these are just some old slotted screws and there's not much to get a purchase on. So unfortunately I had to bust out the old fake Dremel tool and cut the heads of the screws off. With them removed, the plate could then just pop off. So to remove the rust, I've got this quite aggressive looking wheel. I've never tried one of these before and this came from Tool Station. It's meant to be good for rust and it should remove it without removing any of the metal like I'd be worried a flat disc would do. It's a bit like a scouring pad, just a bit firmer and did a really good job of removing the rust or the heavy rust without damaging the metal itself. So with the worst of the rust removed, I can get these parts painted. I've got some Hammerite direct to rust, so I didn't have to get them perfect, just the worst of it off. So I'm just spraying some of the internal components black, and that's the dust hood and the bars that go on the bottom that the motor mounts onto. Even though this is Hammerite, it's a smooth finish, not a hammered finish. 
So to remove the rust from some of the smaller components, I'm going to try some evapor rust. You might have seen some of the big YouTubers like Jimmy using this. I've had this bottle a couple of years and used it several times, and that's one of the great things about it, you can keep reusing it. I'll stick a link to my Amazon page, I'll put it under the finishes tab if you're interested in it. So I just got all the small bits in a tray and got them covered in it, and then left them overnight. I tried to get it so all the bits were submerged, but a couple still poked out, so halfway through the soak I flipped them over. The next morning I can fish all the bits out of the solution and then give them all a rinse off. I leave them to dry on some paper and I give them a few sprays with some WD-40 to stop them rusting again. So with all the machines stripped down and cleaned, I think I'll leave it for here and next time we'll start painting it and getting it put back together. Thanks for watching, thanks to my Patreons and please subscribe for more videos.